go through certain uh, physical ailments eventually i believe that is a faith step where we are eventually getting very strong and uh, god has also showed thrown light in the areas where we could strengthen where we could be even more careful where we could also <clears throat> pay attention otherwise uh, anything uh, suddenly or unnoticeably could uh, come and uh, god surely loves us so he really takes us through so many experiences in a way he would want to see our days protected days multiplied on the face of this earth and we will pray for the divine healing as well and uh, this morning i was thinking about it and uh, i was not uh, bold enough to tell that uh, any sickness or disease might ever could come but it is a constant battle that we have to occupy constantly we have to occupy and we have to say that uh, uh, not even one day you know sometimes it could live uh, sometimes it could look like that we are very very persistent or we are overdoing some things but uh, the fact is the world where we live in it is very very important that we do what is right supernaturally and we do what is right naturally it is just both sides smith wigglesworth a great man of god he used to uh, uh, read every 15 minutes every 15 minutes he has to read something from the word and uh, most particularly he always found scriptures that could promote his healing or that could promote ability to live in a in a way that he could enjoy divine healing all the time and it could look like we are overdoing certain things but the truth is we are constantly living in an atmosphere where our only source of protection and our only source of defense is the blood of jesus and the word hallelujah that's what they said how they overcome him they sang a new song they were clothed with white robes and uh, when they sang a new song they sang it like that and they asked how did you overcome how, uh, what is the secret of your success all the new testament saints they went before the throne of the lamb and they said we we overcame by the blood of jesus and by the testimony of his word amen every day we have to apply it every day we have to be very constant about it and uh, last wednesday i uh, uh, just announced about the new book i am writing faith affirmation that is a the title of the new book i have started writing faith affirmations on five areas where we wanted to apply faith where we wanted to apply the word of god where we could use it as a um a formula or you could use it to build up your faith or you could use those tools to eventually occupy your life where your finances where your family or your emotional areas or the areas where you need physical health there are so many areas we need to experience it right so uh, i know about uh, one servant of god every day in the morning every day in the morning he won't believe he would uh, do it eventually and uh, sometimes I, i become too tired of doing it just i saw what is the point of doing it over and over again is not enough but it is needed that we could do it every day what he does is every day in the morning in the prayer time he would uh, write up all the uh, the parts of the body in a paper he say uh, brain eyes lungs liver kidney heart and uh, what, what other things you see all the uh, parts of the body and he say and he would he would pray like this now i apply the blood of jesus on my brain apply the blood of jesus on my liver <laughs> on my kidney on my <laughs> 
nerve, nervous system, digestive system, anywhere you could see. And he did it like that and he lived more than 80, 90 years. 90 years of no sickness, no disease, just by applying the blood of Jesus. I, I, I tried it, but I, I eventually, uh, okay, I thought, uh, invented a shot. I said, I apply the blood of Jesus all over the organs of the body. Sometimes we forget to do it. But whenever you have that little doubt about weakness come to you. Three days ago, um, I think uh, I went to uh, the, the, the market, vegetable market. I was very thirsty, so I picked up a soda. I think it was kept very cold uh, at the counter. So I picked up a soda and I began to drink it. And eventually, I did not know... In just about five minutes, uh, I, I, I caught a sore throat and uh, irritation in my nose. And, and just in three to four hours, it uh, grew very fastly that I was attacked with cold. And I thought uh, almost uh, two years I've never experienced this thing. And I thought I, I, I don't want to allow it if I just began to allow it. You know what, what happened that morning? Someone called me from India. And they said, uh, I am very, very weak. I am very, very tired. Pastor, could you pray? And uh, they said, for one whole week, I am fully uh, very tired. And uh, it looks like a fever. And uh, I am not able to do anything. I have tried medicine. I have tried rest. And can you pray for me? And I just woke up from the bed. So uh, I just prayed in my bed. And I, as I was praying, there was a voice telling in my mind, okay, she will be healed, but you will catch that sickness today. <laughs> I am not exaggerating. It is, it happened to me. As if I was praying through her, something I do not know, it, it should be the devil. It said, she will be healed and you will catch that sickness by today. I just do not uh, mind it very well. But eventually, that same afternoon, about two o'clock, I p picked up that uh, soda and I began to drink and eventually it began to develop some kind of cold or something. But I began to fight it and I said, no, eventually I'm not going to allow this to take root in my body. And I said, I'm going to fight it and I'm going to overcome it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So even then it showed some symptoms. I began to ignore it, I began to ignore it. If I begin to entertain that thought, the moment you begin to entertain the thoughts of sickness in you, it will take deep root. And it can develop into fear, worry, and it could also make you feel weak. You know, every time you have to fight against it. Every time you have to fight against it. Not that what we have experienced yesterday could be the condition today or tomorrow, unless we occupy God's word constantly. Amen? Hallelujah. So today I wanted to a little bit talk about that truth on divine healing and encourage you how uh, your understanding on the, on the truth of divine healing could be very strong. And how could we enjoy divine healing as children of God? I think is healing our birthright? Yes or no? Yes. Amen? Is it God's will or not God's will? Yes. Amen. You know, when we come Think about the healing part, divine healing. Many, many, many children of God in the body of Christ, they think healing is something, uh, it is a choice. It is a choice which uh, you do not make, but God makes. They think healing is a choice which God makes. You cannot do anything about it. It is not in your hands. It is not your choice. To either live in a perfect in a perfect health or to enjoy a sick free life or if it is a choice that you make or God makes and most do it is the will of God and not even one hair in your head will fall without his will and even a sparrow which is sold in the markets for two cents even that will not happen without the will of God and they say it is in the sovereignty of God's power that everything happens according to what he purposes. 
you know if we go deep into god's truth if we go deep into the areas where where god is wanting to promise his healings in bible we read he is our physician amen he is our physician bible calls he is our physician i am the lord that healeth thee when the people of israel were in the in the bondage in the slavery god sent a prophet and said why is my people sickness not healed why their wounds are not incured is there no balm of gilead it is a powerful medicine they used at that time they said don't you use that medicine to cure yourself don't you go find a doctor and more than that i could heal my people he, he just said it's not my uh, it's not my word a medicine unto you in proverbs he said and even then okay if you want a second resort or second best option at least go and find a bomb of gilead is not there a bomb of gilead in the land why don't my people's wound and sickness not healed or not cured it is it is god's concern that he is wanting to see his children live in all the goodness in the areas where we could completely or constantly put the enemy to defeat not even one day we we need to entertain it it is always god's clean intention that he always wanted to see the body of christ we live in a way where we could enjoy at most victory in every areas of our life and if you wanted to know i could just go on giving you many many scriptures in in galatians 3:13 bible says cursed is he that hangeth on the tree that christ died according to the curse of the law thereby redeeming everyone that is bound to that curse what is that curse that curse is found in deuteronomy 28 you read deuteronomy 28 there is a list of blessing there is a list of curses there it says you will be cursed when you come in cursed when you go out the the bowls you need will be empty your uh, your cattle will die at young age and you will go through fever sores boils terrible wounds infections allergies you know and, and and at the end it said also the sickness and disease which is not mentioned in this doctors have found out there is almost 5600 diseases in the world 5600 you know 5600 diseases they have found out and still new inventions are coming and you see it is god's intention that he called it the work of the evil he called it the curse of the law he found that is the works of the death works of the darkness when jesus went to the cross he also nailed all those curses all those commandments that was laid contrary to us why did god put that in the very first place he said if you disobey my commandments then you will have all the sicknesses if you disobey you see why because the law which was given to the people of israelites it was given in a manner that it made them voluntarily disobey or however they tried hard to do it they fail and uh, no one could qualify for it amen when jesus healed uh, 10 men with leprosy he said go and show it to your go and show yourself to the priest why did he send them to the priest because since the law was written no one ever was cured from leprosy leprosy was an incurable sickness at that time in the priest service time or you call in their experience in their lifetime no priest has ever seen a leopard cured it is just written when when someone is cured of leprosy they go show to the priest but that never happened it really it never really happened any priest did not witness it any priest did not see any leper come i am healed so give me a clean chit so i can go and live with the community no once it came it is done it is for their whole lifetime exception is naaman in the bible the naaman in the bible the, the the syrian captain he was the one who was cured by leprosy by prophet elijah and uh, and it did not really happen actually so that's why jesus sent the 10 men he said go and show why let the priest know that there is someone who is healing some incurable disease 
and at least by that they will know that healing is the work of god he wanted to tell a message go and show those religious people that there is someone who could heal any incurable disease so they will know that something is happening at least then they will believe who jesus is that's why he said go and show but nine people they were already jewish so they eventually they ran in um excitement they they went and showed but there was one samaritan he was not a jewish he could not go anyway so he came back he thought who will i go like they are all jewish i am samaritan better i go to the one who healed me so he came back to jesus and he said uh, um thank you for healing me and he said it's not nine people to gather with you where are those nine he said uh, they as you said they went to show themselves to the priest and uh, since i am a samaritan i am not allowed to go meet up a, a jewish uh, priest so i just came back since you are the one who healed me so i came back to thank you and jesus said uh, your faith has made you well and you be whole and go back when he came back eventually not only his physical health was secured but he also got healed in his soul and spirit his salvation becoming whole his eventually his sins was also forgiven because he came back to the one who healed amen every time we see that one healing will lead you to the next level of healing why we need to live in perfect health because only one step of healing will also eventually to the next one you see when he came back to jesus he came healed in his body but still there are some things missing so he said okay now you are healed in your physical um, uh, in reality so let me also heal you in your spiritual reality so he is elevating to the next level where do you start where does the work of god start in you it starts from where you are going through a suffering i i spoke on uh, the soap soup salvation um, friday evening on how uh, the missionaries who came to india first were most concerned with people's basic hygiene so they they began to give uh, uh, medical kits or soap or clothes or anything and then they thought okay the people were hungry so let us feed them with milk powder wheat and whatsoever need malnutrition so they began to give food and they took care of the basic needs and then thirdly they said okay now we'll present to you about jesus they they shared the gospel but we, what the name what was the outcome given to them they convert people through wheat and milk powder <laughs> you know the whole of india what they said they convert people for wheat and milk powder that's the name that was given but eventually they did not come to convert people with wheat and milk powder they saw these people were very very poor they live in a very miserable condition in south india if you could have learned about the history in southern part very southern part those days even women were not allowed to be clothed fully and they saw the ill treatment they saw the things the people were going through so they the ones the moment they saw they wanted to lift them from their social oppression so what they did they first began to be more concerned about their literal situation they saw their hygiene poor hygiene they saw women die at very young age in pregnancy uh when um, in in vellur south india uh, uh, what is the, the name of that lady um haida scarder she came to start medical college the story was she was a young young christian uh, she came to visit her dad to be with her dad for one or two months she came from america to just visit his dad who was a medical missionary a doctor a missionary in that area and one day his dad went on treatment for another village and uh, that uh, midnight what she saw changed her whole life about 10 o'clock one man came said uh, where is the doctor he said doctor is not there so my wife is suffering she is wanting to give birth to a child but no doctor uh, so 
Uh, she, uh, he assumedly thought that uh, she could be a doctor. She said, why don't you come and help? He said, I am not a doctor. It's, it's my dad who is a doctor. I can't. And then I, uh, again another man. Again another man. That whole night five men came asking for help. But there was no doctors. And eventually the next day morning five women's dead body going over the street. Because all those women died in that pregnancy. Because there was no medical help. That, that touched her heart very much. And again, uh, the next week, a Muslim man came and just said, could you come and help my wife? And by the time her father was there, I said, okay, I will come. But I said, no, you cannot touch my wife because you are a man. How can a man treat a woman? It is forbidden in our religion that no man can either touch a woman or treat a woman. He said, uh, eventually, even when Haida Scott's father was willing to help, he uh, did not take it and he said, no. I refused to take this help and eventually next day that woman was dead. That touched her heart and in India it was a taboo for women to go to school even. So how will you produce lady doctors? All evils, all the work of the enemy, people were bound with the work of the enemy. So when, when, when servants of God, missionaries came the very first thing they wanted to deal is the social problem. They wanted to deal is with the condition of the people. It is with the, with, with the problems which existed, which could cripple or make them not move forward to the next level. So what they did, they began to work on basic things, elemental things. If they saw them poor, suffering, going through health and crisis, oppression, they began to deal. When people were elevated from their social economic problem, then they began to also give a security through salvation to show them that there is a God who cares for you, not just your body, but also your spirit that is eternal life. They began to show, teach the love of God. And they said, you could also serve God. And they brought to a level where anyone could be a priest and could be in a place they could take up the word take up the word of God and preach because it was denied not even to enter into the temples. It all began from where people were suffering the most. And you see, it is same in the areas where healing or any problems we go through today, it word does not change. Strategies of the gospel will not change though the situations change. Now we don't have such problems like that. But still, there are ways we go through sufferings comparably equal to what we have seen in past days. Maybe that was present physically, but now it is spiritually present. You know, that mindset, that attitude, or the, or the bitter experiences, or the curse we call of the generation, that's still there. We, we, we allow it, we allow the devil to take root through that. And you see there are generations who go through that curse, 100 years. In Africa, demons manifest and say, how long are you living in this person? 300 years, <laughs> but that person could be only 42 or 45. How is it possible a demon could live in a person for 300 years when their age is only 45 or below 50? What is the fact? It's simply telling, I just came into this bloodline 300 years ago. Five generations before I entered and that has been carried on. Second, third, four, five. What happens? In my, in my church, uh, a fisherman family Every male in the family would die when they reach 50. Every male in the family will die when they are 50. And particularly, any man who is married to that family, five girls in that family, any man who, who got married to that particular family, no one would cross 50. The first one died... Early in the morning when he came from the ocean fishing, nothing happened, nothing. No accidents, nothing. Just came from the fishing boat, stepped on the shore, 
blood vomit died no reason no sickness nothing is found second sister's husband went on a bus fell down died in an accident exactly 50 third one 50 and the fourth one she came to a church when she was 35 and her husband 40 <laughs> for i think 42 <laughs> she said pastor this is our family history <laughs> so i began to pray for that lady and she began to manifest and that the demon which lives inside her began to speak and i asked why did you come and the demon began to say because this lady's mother destroyed my children i said which children are you talking about he said um once they had a house in thiruvattur and in that house they had a a small area where uh, they had a snake pit where the cobras was living there and they wanted to extend that house so they demolished that uh, cobras and eventually the snakes and other um, uh, smaller ones got died and and the spirit said since you destroyed my worship area i will also destroy your family that was the curse and any man would not cross 50 and i began to tell the demon i i command you go out in the name of jesus it really struggled for 3 months it took 3 months to chase the demon out of that lady many many nights we have struggled many many days she used to come sincerely to every prayer 40 days fasting prayer she will be the first person to come and stand at the time of worship the demon will torment her sometimes after the worship she will find herself Uh, wounded uh, some some places in her head will be swollen because she will be uncontrollable rolling here and there and three people together cannot control her and she will dash herself and and the demon you know any time a demon lives a person it does not live that easy even in the bible when jesus came down from the mountain after the experience of transformation he came down from the mountain and the father brought a son he said master your disciples cannot chase this demon out of my son and he said come out he commanded and immediately that demon began to torment him he did not leave easily even before the presence of jesus he did not go like this it tormented for certain time then it left him that is a condition when demon leaves someone it will not go that easy it will torment it will uh, battle with you it will struggle because it has to be uprooted from that person's dna their bloodline you know and sometimes i have seen people delivered from demon possession with some damage in their brain it will leave some damage i will go forever i will leave some damage and go it is like a mentality we have seen some tenants in india the house owner comes now you have to vacate this house they say no we can't they say no no we have to, you have to vacate they say okay we will vacate then they plan before we go let us break the walls break the plumb lines do maximum damage and uh, he will not give our advance back so we will create a you paid 20000 advance so we will create 50000 last then we go at least i am happy we left a big damage <laughs> true or not tell me yes or no yes or no tell me people do even here in edmonton i read a report about it one of my friends she said she has three four houses and she um uh, gave her house for a tenant from india or someone the, the moment uh, she said now we wanted to vacate because she is just doing a mess with that property breaking everything the carpets the new carpets which he uh, uh, you know uh, furnished with new carpets more than 20000 dollars on that everything was made mess in one year and she thought if i just keep this woman she will eventually make a big loss so let me take a decision to send her out but eventually what she did she thought okay i will do more damage before i leave this place it really costed them several thousand dollars to fix it because i witnessed it i went and saw the patio i saw the backyard i saw the the basement same with the demon when demon leaves a person it will say okay 
now it's time for me to go out of this body go out of this person i will leave a permanent mark and most of the area the demon want to touch is their brain some level of mental sickness i have seen people delivered from demons but still mentally ill to certain extent you say it's, it's not healing 100% yes it is 100% then why when god heals a person he heals you only 85 and leaves that 15% of areas not healed no there are areas where you need to be very very conscious that you have to check if there is 100% healing you have received it is gradual when god healed that leper man with leprosy he healed only his body in the first area but that healing gradually next to a higher healing because he came back right i have several stories to tell you when i came into ministry a family in mahabalipuram they are hindus they they came for prayer <clears throat> very very staunch hindu families the incurable sickness about the condition of death that man was about to die in next 5 days i was very young only 6 uh, uh, months in ministry they brought and i prayed miraculously god healed that man and my idea okay now god healed you also i thought okay i will also eventually lead them to a higher level of revelation and also pray for their soul and pray for their spirit so i said why don't you come next sunday they came next sunday with a huge uh, uh, what is that uh, uh, what do you call this uh, uh, the dabra the in the under <laughs> a huge uh, copper uh, vessel with full of uh, rasna mix i thought okay maybe they wanted to give people to show their gratitude because they were healed so at the end of the service they gave a, each cup of rasna to every believer and they said pastor thank you for praying very much yeah, since jesus healed us we wanted to uh, show little bit offering we want to give a cup of rasna to everyone and they never came back after that they thought okay jesus healed so we will give back the rasna packet to everyone that's where their matter is over you don't call again for come for fasting prayer come for bible study no 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 we received healing enough we will go back to our former gods you know what they thought they were healed 100% but they stopped their deliverance at first stage if they could have come back their intention is maybe we don't wanted to receive jesus they want jesus as their savior not their lord savior means deliverer healer we call jesus lord and savior lord means master husband owner that is the name of the meaning lord landlords we call owner people all over the world they want jesus to be their savior healer deliverer but not their master the moment you say he is also your lord that's where the problem starts they said we can allow him to be the savior but not our lord not our owner not our master we want his healing we want the good things that he could offer to us but the moment you tell can he also making your lord and savior they say we can make him our savior but not our lord that's why whenever you lead a person to christ you make sure that they tell it that i receive jesus as my lord and savior hallelujah how many of you can raise up your both hands and say jesus is my lord and savior can you do it before me jesus is my lord and savior if you do that you are allowing him to be the lord of your life also the savior of your life do you understand when the 10 leper nine leprous man with leprosy they wanted jesus to be their savior not their lord but one man came he said i will also make you my lord then he said you go well now you are whole 
you see the complete picture of salvation there see you might see uh, jesus is very biased that uh, what will that uh, other nine uh, jewish people do because since they are jewish they did what they knew they knew very well if you are healed from any sickness you have to go show it to the priest and they just obeyed what jesus did so how come jesus could eliminate or exclude that men because you know the mentality was they want only healing in their bodies but this man want much more he wanted to also know the person who give the healing right tomorrow morning you find a 50000 dollar packet on the door steps you are searching who put this big parcel before my house i could not find anyone and it said okay anyway maybe it was given to me angel brought or someone brought i don't care money is needed will take finish enjoy it and you forget that means i got something but some people will just think about the parcel who could be the person <laughs> they want to know the giver they want to know the giver they want to know the person who gave it not the gift which is important giver or the gift which is important gift or the altar gift or the altar bible says uh, Uh, which is important the gift that is kept on the altar or the altar that makes the gift perfect you know a king lived a, a rich man in, in earth he was about to die he had no children no children even one son he had he died so eventually he came to the end of the life and he wanted to distribute all his wealth so he called all his servants he said you can take anything whatever you want anything whatever you want so this is the day all of the servants come and take whatever you they came the first lady the the very close one to him went to the the bedroom took all the jewel and the money other fellow came he said all furnitures fridge washing machine i'll take another fellow i will take all your land one fellow driver came i will take the car you use okay everything was left but finally one fellow was there sitting did not do anything he said why are you wandering everything is taken everything is taken nothing is left what do you want he said sir i want you sir what are you going to do with me when i have nothing now i have given all my wealth i have become empty and what are you going to do with me i will be a burden to you he said no i want you if you could give yourself to me he said okay take me then i said now from no one you are under my custody since you said you are under my custody now i tell you i command you you should do what i should i tell you he said okay he said now call all the fellows who took that uh, uh, money and everything to return it back <laughs> call all the fellows and tell to return everything whatever they have taken <laughs> so <laughs> so what happened he eventually had to obey so he called every servant he said please bring back everything whatever you have taken since now this fellow have taken me so i am as uh a servant or i am as now a subject so i have to listen what he says that fellow had brain he, he he knew what to take he knew if i could take the giver i could also possess all the gifts amen hallelujah you know <clears throat> that's very true that's why bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god and all the things will be given to you but our my, our our areas of thinking or what we think is we will go after everything we will lose keep god at the end we will come when we, when we are going through some problem then that time you will no 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 it is a preventive medicine it is a preventive cure you know prevention is better than cure it is all about when we live with utmost strength 
we have to occupy the presence in our mind we have to occupy the knowledge of god's word we have to occupy in a way that the word of god will take dominance it will rule our hearts mind emotions every single areas of our life will be guarded will be ruled by god's word then you check any areas of poverty or sickness or anything will never take root in you because you're constantly refuting those enmities that you face in the earth many many truths we could uh, learn from word of god eventually stop at certain level we eventually we, we see uh, any deliverance any blessings from god is permanent or it is one time no it is not that it is all the time depends on your occupation it depends on how we are going to occupy it i see several people healed of cancer good people you know simply they did not know the truth very sad i know a, a very good godly people in edmonton mike and ursula very very lovable people ursula was healed of cancer miraculous healing miraculous healing then again 3 years later the same cancer came and she died and everyone was so discouraged because they after that healing they threw a very big thanksgiving meeting where they called many servants of god they gave so much money even she i think in in 2012 she just uh, to honor her healing she she gave me a 2000 dollar check just to you know honor that healing i did not ask but she simply gave and i was also so upset and very very confused why god just healed her for three more years you know that healing should have been permanent and even many christians were telling i don't understand she was completely healed then why did it come again because healing is not permanent god gives you something but it is your duty to secure it it is your duty that you will guard it occupy it constantly you bring god's word the, the same way how you fought it through prayer and so many things when you receive it you just stop doing it you know you don't continue it but you have to maintain that status you have a car you drive it you have to maintain it. regular oil checkups right regular oil checkup regular changing of tires regular changing of brake pads regular changing of everything any small issues you attend to it and you can keep it more than 30 40 years if you are a, if you could keep in single hand you know if you don't make a rough use i've seen people keep vehicles for 50 60 years even well maintained in the same way anything which god gives you a salvation that's why bible says work out your salvation with diligence diligence that means with care god has trusted you this very big treasure this gift given you the healing given you the blessings take it with care use it with diligence don't be careless why because the enemy is always trying to damage it disturb it trying to snatch it away he is always eyeing your blessing if we become careless and not diligent sometimes same thing come up again you know it is always in our choice in our choice to keep up all the blessings it is possible you could keep it forever ever if you wanted to live 110 is possible it is a confession of your mouth it is the choice you make maybe you don't make choice very late but you if you wanted to see yourself next 50 years you start better right now you started right now even to not too late you just see whatever the things you wanted to see from god occupy it take the word now the book i am going to write it, it will be just scriptures at least a 50 scriptures i am thinking with 250 truths and scriptures for reference 50 on each topic finance family healing righteousness 
five things i just put these are the five things we might need in our life five basic things what is the five basic things we need good health good wealth good relationship our spirituality right standing with god if this five is there then whatever what is the other thing you need all these things is given it all makes you a complete person a man of success we call amen and it is possible why because jesus brought it he paid the price he made it freely available to those who believe and if you shall want to experience from now on it is possible that every day you are aware of it you consciously apply in your life you begin to apply those truths in the areas of your life every day every day every single day checking your body spirit and soul doing whatever is necessary anything that is trapping you try to come out of that thing any struggles anything that is making you to hinder again and again find a way that you will come out of it any hindrances just by dwelling in the word of god making word your solution for ever and ever if you shall do that you will see you are growing in every area as honor increasing respect increasing goodness of god increasing authority of god increasing in your life the grace of god increasing favor of god increasing you will see yourself growing every day in every areas you will eventually feel that you are more with every blessings god has given you where your sphere of influence is getting bigger bigger and bigger why because as as the level of truth and revelation enters you it will grow you automatically last week i said you want money you don't pray for money you pray for revelation you want health don't pray for health pray for revelation in the area of health what we need is revelation what we need is truths that could lead us to higher level amen i think i wanted to pray and uh, encourage you today and you will take it up home as you go home just uh, don't uh, forget these words mutter it meditate it meditating is nothing but bringing it back to your mind have you seen a cow it will always you see the cow chewing something you see a cow grow grass in a field it will take as much as it might needed it will haze hazing is eating very fast it will grab it will take as much as it can into that big bag it has and at the rest time it would bring back all the things that has eaten and it will begin to chew it it will begin to chew it make it a big paste then slowly with the the saliva it will go inside that becomes the milk and we take the milk and we drink it is full of strength why even though it takes very fast now in the church in half an hour time you try to put as much as in your mind fast 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 in half an hour and you go back you have to digest this truth for at least 8 to 9 hours night time you bring back the truth and think on it think on it digest it again whatever you have received in this half an hour go back use 8 hours or 10 hours 5 days 10 days months years digest it meditate upon it it will release you from every areas of darkness hallelujah and you will come back to me and say we are enjoying the goodness of god we are enjoying the healing presence we are enjoying every blessings and god is wanting to make you victorious in every areas of your life and i pray that god has touched your soul spirit and body go back and check your bodies and see if there are improvements as you meditate upon it and come back and give your testimonies we are going to pray heavenly father we now thank you for the word the truth that is found in god's word now we pray that you will make it blessing unto our bones our nerves our tissues muscles every parts of our body every areas of our life will be touched by the power of god 